Welcome to College Algebra. In this lecture video, we're going to talk about something called the transformation of functions. Uh, we kind of mention things like transformation of functions um, in other lecture video already. So here I'm just going to formally introduce them. So what is so-called the transformation of functions means the graph of our different types of function will actually shift okay to the right to the left up or down or it will reflect and you can also stretch all right so here is a um, a summary of all the types of transform transformation we will talk about okay something called a vertical shift okay so vertical shift um, a lot of our functions like a u for example the vertex is located at the origin um, for function simply just like an x squared so if I add a number k behind my function, okay, then a graph will shift up k units. So if I will plus 2, then the vertex will shift up 2 units. If it's a minus k, if it's a minus a number, so if this is a minus 2, then the graph or the vertex will shift down 2 units from the origin. All right. Now, if it's inside a function, okay. So I'm I purpose using h and k just like the vertex. So if it is inside the function, maybe for example, like a square root of x minus one, for example, the minus one or the minus h means the graph will shift to the right h unit. <coughs> okay. So in other words, the vertex will shift to the right. If it's a plus h, then the graph will shift to the left. Okay, so many units. All right, reflection about the x-axis or y-axis. If there is a negative sign in front of my function, so using a negative x squared, for example, we mentioned this before, how do I know that u will open up or open down? Well, it depends on the leading coefficient is positive or negative. So in front of my function, if it is a negative, if it's negative, then it's a reflection about the x-axis. Alright? If the negative sign is inside the function, like square root of negative x, then that negative sign will be reflection about the y-axis so let me demonstrate real quick if I were typing a regular square root of x okay we know it's gonna go to the right alright if I was typing let me go to the next one if I would say second square root of negative x well I'll make this line darker I'm gonna use a double line now this time you, will, you should be flashing about the y-axis, that means what? You go to the left. Okay. Now we also mentioned something with parabola open wide or open narrow. It's based on the numerical value that's right in front okay, of the function. So the graph will stretch vertically if the number in front of the function is bigger than 1 it will compress vertically okay if that number is anything between 0 and 1 so uh, when we talk about parabola I use the word open wide or open narrow stretch vertically will be open narrow compress vertically will be open wide okay so these are the things that um, you know we keep in mind uh, whenever we are dealing with the graphs Okay, of our functions. Okay, so these are little things, little things to keep in mind. All right, so for example, okay, consider the following function. Determine the more basic function that has been shifted, reflected, stretched, or compressed. All right, so the basic function, this is a cubic function to the third power. It's a cubic function. So if I would use my handouts I have before I think it was a 3.2 maybe 
It was one page with bunch of graphs. Uh, maybe not that one. Let's put right there. There we go. If we look at this common graphs, so the more basic, okay, the more basic function will be a cubic function. So the leading coefficient is not negative, so the cubic function normally will be this one. being shifted, reflected, stretched, or compressed. So it has been shifted because the plus 4 is inside the function. So basically you can say um, this, this graph has been shifted to the left. Okay? Four places. That's been shifted. Okay, it did not be reflected because there's no negative sign in front of the um, leading term. All right, it's not com scratched or compressed because there's not, no other numerical value other than one here. <laughs> All right, identify the shape of a more basic function from step number one. So uh, I think this is a multiple choice type of problem. All right, so we say, let me switch it over. So this one, I'm gonna put this graph right here for step number two. This is the basic function. Okay, this is a multiple choice, I think. Um, you get to select the which graph. Now, step number three, it wants you to actually graph, okay, the function. So, based on the function, the plus four right here, it tells us it has been shifted to the, the plus four, the plus four, shifted to the left four units. So we will select as being horizontal shift. Yes, to the left. How many units? Four units. Okay. It did not stretch or compress. It did not reflect at all because there's no other numer. Because uh, the x is not negative. The leading term is not negative as well. Okay. There's no vertical shift because there's no plus or minus and other numerical value outside my function. All right. So now, once you do this, once you check off these and in, insert in these questions, you will actually draw the picture for you. So I'm gonna kind of draw it right here beside it. So parenthesis x plus four, close it, hold into the third power. So this picture displays that it has shifted to the left four places. I'll just kind of graph this real quick. So this is the, this will be the one you will select. All right, determine the domain and the range of the given function. So as far as domain wise, this side keep on going left, that side keep on going up. So the domain does not change. Negative infinity to infinity. So is the range. Because one side keep on going down, the other side keep on going up. Alright, so for cubic function, which is called a polynomial function, domain and range is always the same. Alright, let's try another one, okay? Let's try another one. Alright, same thing. This is another cubic function. So what's happening now is with the negative, the negative sign is inside my function. So we know it has been reflected, okay? With the minus one, okay? With my h being negative, I also know it has been shifted. So let me, so let me just drag this graph one more time. So this is another cubic function, okay? Still a cubic function, so that's a general idea. So what's going on now? Let me bring it down here. 
if I will rewrite this function by the form I can rewrite this as negative x minus 1 to the third power so the negative being inside the function right in front of x okay the graph has the graph will be reflected about the y-axis so I'm reflecting about the y-axis okay there's no reflection about the x-axis now if there's a negative one if the negative is in, is on the outside of this parenthesis that will be reflection of the x-axis <laughs> has it been stretched or compressed no because there's no other numerical value other than one in front of my function okay so it's a horizontal shift to the right minus one means was shifted to the right one place to the right one place all right there is no vertical shift so it normally look like this all right so now okay my basic shape got to change so I'm not going to use this one. Okay, I'm going to put this one up here this time. Because I have a shift and reflect about the y-axis. So it's going to be something look like this one. There you go. Got to look something similar to this. Because it has been flipped. It has been reflected about the y-axis. So now if I will graph it. negative 1 minus x whole thing to the third there we go see look just like this picture right here it has been shifted uh, make sure I'm typing it right minus 1 okay kind of weird in it because it looked like it has been shifted to the left So let's go to the table and find out what's going on. This picture is not what we thought it was going to be. Negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Alright, I know my picture is right because I type in a right. So if it shifted to the right one, okay, but then if we flip it over, you actually will come on this side right here. That's the reason why the table demonstrate okay it's actually normally supposed to be one zero but this time it's negative one zero okay you gotta be a very, little bit very careful so if you say i shifted to the right one and the homework counter is wrong because when we when the reflection of the y-axis occurs okay then it becomes a, a horizontal shift to the left of one place okay but then again, you are making selections on these, okay, as a multiple choice. So if you will go with, go to the right one, and then eventually when you do a reflection y-axis, okay, this could also be correct. So check it out, check it out which way they, which way is the way they want to see. All right, let me take a picture of it. So kind of explain to you why sometimes the answer we thought it's correct turned out to be incorrect from the homework is because you know when when we add other component to the graph okay it kind of switch things up a little bit it is true normally the minus one means shift to the right but would it affect would it affect me will it affect the graph when I actually reflect about the y-axis okay all right, domain and range should be the same. Keep on going left, keep on going right, keep on going up, keep on going down. So everything is to the infinity. From negative infinity to infinity. All right, let's do a different type of graph, okay? I know this problem, just by looking at it, seems like a rational function, but it is not, because um, 
the variable term the variable is not in the denominator so this is actually a quadratic function this is a parabola so let me um, rewrite this function down here so if I would look at this function as negative half x squared plus 2 the x squared tell me it is a parabola okay it's going to be a u but with a negative sign in front of it it tell me it eventually tells me my u will actually point <clears throat> will open downward so it has been reflected all right the plus 2 tell me it has been shifted then the half the half part the number right in front of my leading term okay if that thing if the number is between 0 and 1 I have been compressed vertically so th for this example I have I'm also being compressed okay so identify the shape of the more basic function found in step number one so this is more like a parabola open downward so in a way you start thinking about okay being a parabola is a u when you see the x squared you know that's a u open up but if you look at other components okay the transformation it will eventually transform into a parabola open down and when we come to graph actually graphing it okay we including the shift so there is no H inside the function. So this is actually the K. All right. So there is actually no horizontal shift. All right. So the half tell me I'm being compressed. Okay. The negative sign okay in front of my leading term tell me it's a reflection of the x-axis okay it's not a y-axis reflection y-axis reflection that negative gotta be inside something look like this that negative gotta be inside the inside the function but you know right in front of your your variable okay. then that will be reflection on the y-axis but this problem is actually not all right, vertical shift up two places. There you go. All right. So when you graph it, okay, I'm going to say parenthesis negative one over two x to the second power plus two. So now when I graph it, I should expect something point downward. Okay, shift it up two places. Okay, and this is a little bit compressed on you. Okay, so what's my domain and range this time? Well, domain, if you think about it, this side keep on going to the right the sides keep on going to the left so my domain for a quad for a parabola still from negative infinity to infinity the range is a little bit different the range is from down and up how down both of both of the both side go you keep on going down to negative infinity so down and up come all the way up to this point this point the highest point or the vertex here got to be positive 2 because the function simply just shifted up two places okay reflection about the x-axis all right let's try another one now this is a rational function because I see a variable x in the denominator um, as you can recall okay these two is a rational function these two is also a rational function the difference between these four is um, these two first two on top 
is where the exponent is odd these two down here exponent is even okay so just by looking at it just by looking at it <coughs> okay let me go back up okay odd exponent right is either one so what's the difference between each one of these well if I was simply graph one over X it will look like this one okay so this is the original picture so when does one would it look like this okay if it's a reflection about the y axis okay oh excuse me x axis x axis reflection about the x axis this flip down this flip back up so we don't have any negative here so we don't have to worry about that for this particular problem um, the minus 5 tells you that it is a vertical shift because this is not inside of a function. Let me demonstrate what I mean by that. Now, this is 1 minus x. So, if I will, if I will come down here and say 1 divided by parentheses x minus 5 and graph it, this is the second one now I have shifted to the right five places so that minus five inside with the X in the parentheses is shifting to the right this minus five is on the outside of the rational function so it simply give me a vertical shift All right, so the only thing I got here should be the vertical shift okay, I did not reflect so this for this problem, you know, you can actually <coughs> can identify the more basic shape. So when we come to this step, horizontal shift there was none. Vertical shift went up five places. There is no reflection and there is no compress because okay because this is actually one right in front of the X okay so there's no compressed or vertical stretch for my function all right let me actually grab this function it always help you know so go through these steps give you an idea of what the picture will look like before you even graphed it so let me come back up okay. one over X this is two different terms so my first term got to be in the parentheses 1 divided by x then minus 5 so I simply just shift it down okay, 5 places what is my domain remember now my denominator x still cannot equal to 0 right here because if this x is equal to 0, that will make the whole function undefined. So as far as from left to the right, my domain got to be from negative infinity all the way to 0. Using parentheses, because I cannot be 0. Union from 0, keep on going to the right. Alright, my range, my y value, okay. This side keep on going up, this side keep on going down. So my range is negative infinity to infinity. Alright. So here we go. So this one is a minus 5 down here with the x and then the plus 5. So this problem, if you just think about the just think about the picture we just had, the original <coughs> basic graph. So what's happening now is the minus 5 right here tell me that I have shifted. The plus 5 right here tell me I'm also shifted up. The negative sign in front of it tell me I have been reflected. Okay, still 1 right here. Okay, so I did not stretch or compress. Alright. 
So let me kind of highlight this real quick. So what's happening now? Okay. If I would just draw you a regular 1 over x again. Normally this is what you're supposed to look like. The basic function. Now I'm going to say negative parenthesis because I got to separate between the two terms. 1 over this is two term in the denominator count as one denominator so add another parenthesis x minus 5. Close parenthesis for my denominator close the parenthesis for my first term then plus 5. Make this into a double line alright this is the second one there we go so this this part right here is the same part as this part right here so this thing has shifted to the right and up five okay this part normally is right here but it has been flipped about the x-axis okay I didn't like the word flip it's more like a reflect about the x-axis so I am being reflected by the x-axis. Okay, I do have horizontal shift to the right five place. Don't have any compress or stretch. Don't have any reflection about the y-axis. My vertical shift. Okay, my vertical shift is up five places. Okay, now this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, you see this graph right here show you what the y-axis reflection will look like real quick I'm going to delete that one everything is the same still negative parenthesis 1 divided by open parenthesis only difference is this x right here if I add a negative right here x minus 5 close it close it plus 5 now this will be a reflection about the y-axis so let me delete off this negative sign here because that is a reflection about the x-axis so I'm going to take that away just do the reflection about the y-axis this is my regular function this okay this darker one is the is the one for my problem okay the lighter color okay <clears throat> the lighter color one is the, my original problem Alright, so just make it a little bit different. Doesn't look like reflection about the y axis. Does it? Uh, so if I will go a little bit simpler to demonstrate 1 over x, and I'm going to say 1 over parenthesis negative x. There you go. Maybe that would be a little bit better. The regular one and the, the other one. There you go. Alright. Just give us an idea what's going on. Alright, now this time, again, my domain and range, this time my denominator cannot be zero. So what number for x will make my denominator equal to zero? X cannot be what? Five. Alright, because if the x is 5 down here, you'll make the whole thing undefined. So my domain got to be from negative infinity, once I keep on going right, all the way to, you know what, let me regraph it. Because I don't want to, I want to look at this picture when I do this. Sometimes it's going to get them backwards. x minus 5, close parenthesis, close again, then plus 5. There you go. Let me draw you a picture. Alright, so this side keep on going left, this side keep on going right, x just cannot be 5. This side keep on going up, this side keep on going down. Union from 5 to infinity. Right, range will be from negative infinity to infinity. Alright. Let's try one more. This is a cubic function. 
which one of these original graph is a cubic function? Cubic function is a rational function. Excuse me, that radical function. So one of these two is the cubic function. So odd exponents, right? Odd exponents. Even when it's like a square root ones. Alright, so if I would draw a regular of math number four. A regular cubic of x cubic root of x will look something like this one. All right, so what is ooh, ooh. so let's see what's happening here. Okay, this is a regular function. If you look at the the function I'm, we are going to draw, all right, the plus five here tell me it has been shifted to the left. Plus four tell me it has shifted up. Okay, no negative sign. No negative sign in front of the function or inside the function, so that it's not being reflected. The number two right here, tell me I has been what? Stretched. Okay, because that number is bigger than one, it's stretched. So, let's take a look. Alright. So, the plus five right here, tell me I have shifted to the left five places. The plus four, tell me I have a vertical shift up four places. Okay. <clears throat> the two, tell me that I am being stretched. Okay. There's no reflection. Alright, so this is the regular picture, so I'm going to draw you another one here. Two times cubic root. Oops, sorry, wrong spot. Two times cubic root of x plus five. Close parenthesis. <laughs> then plus four. There you go. So, all right. One side keep on going to the right. The other side keep on going left. Okay. One side keep on going up. The other side keep on going down. So my domain and range got to be both from negative infinity to infinity. We will conclude this video for, I mean, right here for right now. Um, in the next lecture video, I'm um, going to do 3.5 part 2. So I'm going to begin to talk about something called the even and odd functions. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you for 